Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to manipulate your data using both the Select Case and Split Files tools. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. So let's start with the Select Case tool. Uh, this is a super useful tool for actually only looking at some of your data when you have to make some kind of deep dive into it. So to get to select case, we go up to data, select cases, and a new window appears. And there's a bunch of options here. So I'm going to go through all of them quickly, and then I'll show you the one that I use most of the time. So first of all, on top by default is selected all cases. This is to say we're going to analyze data for everything that we have. Next is this idea of writing a conditional statement. So if condition is satisfied, and I'll show you that in detail in a second, because that's what I use more often than not. After that, we have a random sample of cases. So we can actually click here on the sample option and it allows select a random sampling of these data as much as you need. So let's say I need approximately 20% of the data. I could type in 20%. I can hit continue. I'll hit OK and I'll just show you what that looks like. If we pop back over to the data view, you see on the left here, there's a bunch of rows here that have these lines through them. What these lines mean are that the data in those rows will be excluded from any analyses that we run. And in this case, it's selected 20% of the data to remain intact. And those are the rows that don't have those lines, like row 1, row 10, row 11, row 12, and so on. So if I run an analysis, it'll only include those particular rows. If I go back to data, select cases. If I wanted to undo this, if I wanted to reanalyze all my data, I would click all cases and hit OK. And if you notice, if you go back to the data editor, all of these are now selected. There's no more lines through them. Some of the other selection tools we can use, if we go back to data, select cases, we can say based on time or case range. So if we select range here, we can say starting on case number, let's say 25 and ending on case number 100, it will only include those observations. So let's just see what that looks like. If I hit continue and hit OK, if we go back to our data editor, we see that all of these are excluded except for the ones that are rows 25 down to row 100 and everything else is excluded. So if we analyze our data, it'll only be for the ones that are not excluded. Again, if we go back to data, select cases, we can use a filter variable. So we could pick any one of these variables. And if the corresponding value for that particular variable is zero, SPSS will exclude those data from the analysis that we run. So just to give you an example, I'm going to pick this variable called sum computer, which really isn't a filter variable, but it, it'll just make the point. So if we pop it over here and we hit OK, what we'll see, let me scroll back to the top, is that here's my variable sum computer. And on occasion, there's a zero here. And you'll notice that that zero corresponds to a row that is no longer being included in our analyses. And that'll be true everywhere else. Anywhere that there's a value other than zero, it will include that in the analysis. So you might have created a variable to filter out some individuals based on some criteria. And that's how you can use that variable to then select those cases in your data file. If we again go back to data, select cases. Those are the ways that you can filter out data. But quite frankly, I actually don't use those very often. Instead, I mostly use this if condition. So I say if condition is satisfied, and I can click if, another window appears which lets me write logical statements or logical operators to determine what is included and what is excluded. So for instance, I've got this variable called page1rt. That is the amount of time it took someone to complete the first page of the survey in seconds. And let's say I want to only look at people who took a certain amount of time. So I can say page1rt, I can move that over, I can either type it in or click this arrow and it'll put that in automatically. And let's say I want to look at only folks who took more than 10 seconds, because I think if you took 10 seconds or less, you're not paying attention to my survey, so I'm going to exclude that. But I also want to only include people who didn't take too much time. So I can actually write a logical statement here. I can say page one underscore RT is greater than 10. And then I can type in and, and then again, I can say page one RT, let's say is less than 600. So somebody who took less than 10 minutes or 600 seconds, I want to include those people. And so if I click continue, you'll see that that gets populated right here. And if I click OK, it will make that exclusion. If we look over to our variable page one RT, which is right here, let's see if we excluded anyone. You can kind of scroll down. And I can see right here, row number 316, that person took 832 seconds, which is much more than my 600 criteria. So they are excluded from all the analysis that I will subsequently run. This is a great way if you want to select cases for individuals that maybe didn't pay attention to your survey, or if you've got a variable where you want to select people, let's say that are only of one particular demographic that you want to analyze or one particular response option, this is a quick and easy way to do that. And the last thing I want to show you in the select cases 
is that you can output things very differently. So I always leave this filter out on selected cases option, and that's gonna give you these diagonal lines over here for the cases that are excluded. But you can also say, copy the selected cases into a new data set. So let's just see what that looks like. I'm gonna say data set equals uh, temp new, just to kind of give us something. And if I click okay, a new data set appears and it's only going to include the valid cases. So not the ones that are excluded. If we actually scroll to the bottom, we see we had a thousand subjects before, now we have 998, so two were excluded. That could be useful if you wanna create a new data set based on some sort of exclusion criteria. I don't need this, so I'm gonna close this dialog box and not save it. And then the last thing you can do if you go to data select cases is you can delete the unselected cases. In other words, it'll remove the ones that are excluded and permanently remove them from your data set. I don't wanna do that because I wanna retain these cases just in case I wanna analyze them for some other reason. So I almost always just select filter out unselected cases, but of course you should do what's appropriate for you. What's worth noting is that this if statement if we pop back in here, can be customized in any way. It doesn't have to be limited to the one variable. You can make it very sophisticated. If you want to analyze only male respondents who are over the age of 30 and took less than two minutes to complete the survey, you can include that, right? Those are just a series of and operators. You can use or operators. You can do any logical operator that you could typically think of when writing these types of statements. So this tool, Select Case, is very useful for digging into your data in very specific ways. If you have a subgroup of people you want to look at or subgroup of responses you want to look at, that's a way to do that quickly and easily. So that's the end of Select Cases, but what's really important to remember is that unless you want to maintain these exclusions, when you're done with your Select Cases, you have to select All Cases and then click OK. What that will do is it will actually put all the cases back into our analysis if that's something that's important to you. So now we'll move on to the Split File tool, which is another way to analyze your data a little more carefully. So if you go back to data, but this time we'll go to split file, a new window will appear. And what it'll allow you to do is create virtual data sets based on a variable. What do I mean by that? Let's say I wanna run a correlation between two variables, but what I wanna do is run that correlation separately for each of a number of subgroups. Well, I can do that really quickly and easily with the split file tool. And let me show you what that looks like. So let's say I'm gonna split on this modality one question. This is a question that indicates how you're most likely to use YouTube, whether it's a computer, a smartphone, or so on. So what I'll do is then I will select this modality one variable, but I have to tell it how I wanna make this analysis. There's two options. There's compare groups and there's organize output by groups. I tend to use organize outputs by groups, but I'll show you both options. So if we take modality one and we move it over to group based on, we then click OK. This is now going to create a series of virtual data sets, one for each level of modality one. So you see that it already sorted it and it's gonna create one data set for group one, one data set for group two, and so on. So now let's run a correlation, something I cover in a different video, but I'll show you how it works here. We go to analyze, correlate by variant, and I'll just pick two variables like these two over here. I'll move them over to the variables tab and I'll, I'll leave all the other options intact. What you'll notice in the output window is I have a series of correlations. And at the top of each of them, it tells me which group we're looking at. So this is only a correlation analysis for those individuals who indicated that computer is their most frequently used modality. And that correlation happens to be 0.65. This is the same correlation, but only for those individuals who selected tablet as their most commonly used modality. This is for smartphones, this is for TVs, and this is for other. So I hope you can see why this is so useful because what it lets you do is quickly run analyses at sublevels as you need them. It doesn't of course have to be this most frequently category. It could be something else like you wanna run an analysis just for men versus women separately, you can select the gender variable. If you wanna run it for any other categorical variable that is split up, you can include that as well. Before I conclude, let me just really quickly show you what that other output looks like. So if I go to split file and instead of saying organize outputs by group, I say compare groups. So I'm gonna leave everything else the same. I click okay and I'm gonna rerun that analysis, and I can do that actually by clicking this little box here. It'll pick up the most recent things that I've done. So here's bivariate correlation. So again, I'm gonna leave it all the same. I just want you to see what that output looks like. Now, instead of having a series of tables, it actually populates a single table with each of those groupings. So here's my computer group, here's my tablet group, here's my smartphone group, TV group, and so on. I personally prefer having it broken up into multiple tables. I find that easier to read. If you prefer to do this, that's fine too. And of course, this can be done for much more than just correlations. This can be done for any analysis that you want, splitting across different groups. Using these two tools in conjunction, select cases and split file, really lets you dig into your data and look at subgroups in a way that you couldn't do without these. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone 
with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.